morning, all of you. I'm going to ch change the wavelength a little and show you a PowerPoint presentation, a presentation I worked for you, not yesterday, day before yesterday. Let's get going. I want to save my time because time is ticking. It's a very interesting shift. I was preparing this presentation on public service. I wanted to understand what is public. This is where I started. As I was launching it, I got a little forward from chat GPT. And it said, it said, it talked about Bhagavad Gita. And he said, Bhagavad Gita unlocks the wisdom of Krishna. It says you can ask any question. I'm asking a question, I'm searching in Googles, in uh, Wikipedias, etc., what is public service to do my research. And I got a forward. Look, something like, you need something? Here you are. So here it is. And this Bhagavad Gita thing came, unlocking the wisdom of Krishna with Ch Ch Chat GPT. And I thought, uh, let me play the game. I was searching what, what is Chat GPT, and I decided to do this naughty thing. So I started to ask. I asked Krishna, he says, Krishna, what is public service? I asked Ch Ch Chat GPT, and Krishna said, it's serving the public, it's benefiting the community, it's volunteering, it's improving the lives of others, it's creating a better world. I couldn't find a better answer than this. I decided to accept it. It is an act of serving the public. It's benefiting community. It's volunteering. And as Mr. Lalit also said, law as a public service is volunteering when he talks about internships, improves the lives of others. As he also mentioned, go to the rural areas, help improve, create a better world. What better answer? I was quite impressed. So I went to the next question. And I said, can we have good public service? I asked Krishna. And Krishna said, yes. Bhagavad Gita teaches that public service is an important part of spiritual growth. It's an act of selfless service. I, li I liked the answer and I believed in it. Then I went back again. I asked the next question. And the next question I asked was, is the public service viewed like this in today's world? Where it's talk about selfless work and Krishna says, I cannot answer this question as it is not related to Bhagavad Gita or my teachings. It's very interesting because I took the Bhagavad Gita to the current world. That is the public service viewed like this in today's world, which is an act of selfless service. So I still go back and ask, I don't give up. And then I said, why do people deviate from the path of real public service? And Krishna says, according to Bhagavad Gita, people deviate from the path of real public service because they're driven by their own selfish desires and attachments. They become attached to the material world and forget their true purpose, which is to serve the divine. Here, you can call it humanity. They become distracted by the pleasures of the material world and forget their spiritual duties. So I ask my next question. So I say, how can we keep them on the path of true public service Krishna? And Krishna answers on the chat GPT, Radhe Radhe, according to the Bhagavad Gita, the path of true public service is to act without attachment or expectation of reward. We should strive to do our duty without any thought of personal gain or recognition. We should also strive to be impartial and unbiased in our actions and to serve the greater good. Oh, great. So I said, wow. Then we said, then I asked Krishna, how can we create such public servants? Because that's our challenge today. And that's my focus. And Krishna says, Radhe Radhe. Imagine, it keeps saying Radhe Radhe. The Bhagavad Gita teaches us that public servants should be selfless and devoted to the welfare of the people. They should be honest, just and compassionate. They should be willing to sacrifice their own interests for the greater good of society. They should be wise and knowledgeable and they should be able to make decisions that are in the best interest of the people. So I ask the next question. 
I say, what should the public servants do to remain on this path? Krishna, and he says, too many requests. Try again, after but one minute. But says, too many questions, got bored of me. But I went on. I waited for exactly a minute and I asked the next question. What should the public servants do to remain the, on the right path of service, Krishna? And Krishna says, public servants should strive to serve the people with integrity and honesty. They should always act in the best interests of the people and not be swayed by personal gain or ambition. They should also strive to uphold the law and ensure justice is served. So I have one more question. I asked Krishna, what are the key practices the public servants should follow to be good public servants? And Krishna says, Radhe Radhe. The key practices of public servants are to be honest, just and compassionate. They should always strive to serve the people with integrity and fairness. They should always be mindful of their actions, mindful of their actions and strive to do what is right and just. I have one more question. Krishna, any practices the public servants can follow to be like this? Krishna says, too many requests. Try again after one more minute. Isn't that interesting? It says too many requests. But it does not. Then it last but not the least. It says, any key practices I ask again, they can follow to be like this? Krishna says, the Bhagavad Gita teaches us to practice yoga, meditation, and self-reflection. I think the key is here, self-reflection, self-audit. These practices can help us to cultivate a sense of joy and peace in our lives. Additionally, it is important to be mindful of our thoughts and actions and to strive to act with kindness and compassion. I couldn't find better answers. It goes to our root of our our being, our DNA. That's what public service is. And this is all on chat GPT. Friends, I thought, let me now tell you, take you to what is good governance. According to the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. These are all the components of good governance. One which is accountable in a time-bound manner. One which is transparent now using great technology to become more transparent. One which is responsive, again, visibly or through use of technology. One which is equitable and inclusive. That's what you see in most of the policies which is being claimed at. One which is effective and efficient. One which follows the rule of law. One which is participatory with lots of, lots of town halls consultations, consensus oriented. These are friends, the characteristics of good governance as far as United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. This is what public servants are expected to be doing, accountable, transparent, responsible, equitable, effective and efficient follows the following the law, consensus, etc. participatory. I wanted to show you something very interesting, which I thought I would. It's an African proverb. It says, the dog is not barking. If the dog is not barking, when the thief is see, st stealing, it means both are friends. I want to now share with you, before I get into the Q&A with Kaveri, is five good practices for public officials. To be humble and to be honest, these are the five key practices I followed to the hilt as Lieutenant Governor Puducherry, and they delivered, and they worked. But since it's not coming from Harvard, it doesn't make much sense. Had it come from a Harvard research, that would have been called a Harvardian model. It won't be called Puducherry model, because it's not come from Harvard or Columbia. But it is a model, if we start following, it will work for public officials, and we are bound to have better governance. Number one is the redressal system, where in Pondicherry, any complaint which it came was, was totally digitized and tracked. It was tracked, every grievance redressal system, every grievance, 
however big or small, little or little whatever. It was consequential or whatever. Our approach was, why should people wait to be served? And what did we do? All sources were tapped. Social media, open house, toll free, WhatsApp, emails, postal, portal. All these were tapped. Grievances reserved were acknowledged, recorded and tracked with government departments for redressal. Petitioners were staying connected with their grievances were satisfied. We would pick up the phone and check. Anybody from here from Pondicherry background can probably say yes or no. Go up and say, it. don't please me. Go up. Do you remember? Yes. How was it? It's a transparent Sorry? Transparent Transparency. But do you, did you experience it or you heard it? Yes. You experienced? We lived it, friends. If we start doing this in every level, chota level to bada level, every level if grievance redressal system is properly tacked. You have, a, you have an app, the mygovernment.in right now. Many times when people say, Kisko I say, go to government, mygovernment.in. It's trapped and it's sent to the department. After that, I do not know what happens. But if every department from the Tessie level up here, we develop the system of grievance redressal, it will work. Second, we absolutely did CSR mobilization in Mission Ridge. Pondicherry was going dry, friends, and they had no mod money. And whatever money they had was very little. And public contractors were not giving orders to PWD because they were not sure of money bills being paid. And Pondicherry being going dry and it was getting saline waters. Poor men were buying bislery water. We tapped the CSR. And government spent no money. We bought, got the machinery and the contractor paid directly. And we only, as junior engineers, supervised the irrigation canal cleaning. And we left Puducherry seven meters high. By the time we left, it is because of the CSR mobilization of the Lucas, the Inox, the MRFs, etc. We had these, and we left. Do you know what? We spent millions and millions on PWDs. If we tap most of these companies which have this machinery as CSR responsibility, we will save crores and crores of rupees and genuine good work would have been done. This is something which can be tried on to make India water rich. I do not know if any politicians from Tamil Nadu are sitting here, but this is something which can be done because you got the Larsons and Tubros of the country here. Third, good practice. WhatsApp groups across rank and file. I had a WhatsApp group from Lieutenant Governor, Chief Secretary, all secretaries, directors of the government with me. Every day we would share the news, whether it's coming through the New Indian Express, etc. Whatever was the news of the day, we all shared because everybody was not reading all papers. But we made them read the important news, what was challenging us. And this is how we connected from Lieutenant Governor, Chief Secretary, all secretaries, Deputy Directors and and a certain politician came and disbanded the whole WhatsApp, saying this is not required because it was provide, providing transparency and accountability. I had to reinstitute it to get that uh, gap going. Even the bureaucrats did not want it, but we had to do it. Fortunately, I was in that position to insist on it, and we got it. That WhatsApp gap it was naming and shaming and recognizing. Why can't we have WhatsApp groups from top to level? Vice Chancellor, Vice Chancellor to HODs and uh, uh, teachers have a chat, share a message. Even if something, not something, uh, something you, it's not palatable comes up, you can have a discussion. But allow free flow of communication of this. And I tell you, it worked. It works. It provided that internal interaction. And fourth, financial prudence and strict adherence to financial rules. If we strict adherence to spending according to the budget allocated. And there, the finance secretaries of the day, chief secretaries of the day, saying this is a beyond the budget, cannot be done. And not say, shift yahan se yahan, shift yahan se yahan. No, go back to the assembly and get the shift cleared because you cannot do the shifts like this. You got to go back because the budget is approved by the assemblies. You, if you have making a shift, go back to the assembly to ask for a change of the heads. Once we were adhering to this in Pondicherry, we were maintaining a, a financial prudence. We did it. The, too much 
to the annoyance. And of course, we cut out all odd business travels. And we met a, met a, kept a close watch on wasteful expenses. Most of all, we promoted the DBT, the direct bank transfer. That's a big boon which has saved million crores of rupees to the government of India by direct bank transfers. In Pondicherry, this decision of the Secretariat was challenged right up to the courts, highest courts, and the highest courts upheld the decision of the executive to, to see that DBT is practiced. And imagine, we had to go right up to the highest courts to get an endorsement because it was hurting certain money bags which were getting filled up otherwise. And last but not the least, focus on officers led field visits. Field visit is very important. Why can't the collectors, the chief secretaries, the DGPs, the SPs, the DIGs, the, uh, the education secretaries, the health secretaries, the law secretaries, anybody spend at least one hour in the field? Rural secretaries, one hour in the field? Just one hour, go visiting villages, go visiting schools, go visiting dispensaries, go visiting the colleges, go sit in the class and see how the teaching is happening. Why not? Why not? I'm not preaching. As lieutenant governor, I cycled the city, Pondicherry, twice over every weekend. I biked and cycled around to see how things were happening. And in that biking, friends, in that biking, NCC students would join me, NSS students would join me, cops would join me, volunteers would join me. But we went to the dirty ponds, the dirty areas, to get the matter cleaned up. Why not? That was all in a bus together, rather than every bus, every car going around separately, we would all jump into a bus and go to areas together, all departments together on the wheel, government on the wheel. Collectors can do this, SPs can do this, secretaries can do this, chief secretaries can do this. Chief, the ministers can do this. Why not sit down together? Why go so many cars with so many sirens? Sit in a bus and go to the place of, of um, uh, solutions or problems. Listen to this. Self-discipline. What exactly do you mean by that? The rule number one is to get vitamin N. It's on discipline. Vitamin N? Yes. That's the rule number one. You need to inject yourself with vitamin N. N is for? N is to learn to say no. That's a vitamin. Yeah. That's how to get self-discipline. Secondly, is setting up priorities right. Thirdly, is avoid complaining. Those are the three factors which can lead you to self-discipline. That to me, that's your presentation as I organized for you the day before yesterday. And the last one was the vitamin N, learn to say no. Public servants will have to have the courage, courage in the conscience to say no. And second is get your priorities right. Get your purpose intact. You came to this public service to serve the people. Keep that purpose right before your eyes and stop complaining saying, Main ye nahi kar saka. I couldn't do this because of this reason. No reasons. You do what you're supposed to be doing and do it the right way. So vitamin N and priorities right and no complaining. If these three things also are followed by the public servants of India, India will be different in another two years. Thank you and Jai Hind. Keep that. Um, uh, Kiran, you know, uh, we have just about two minutes, uh, so I want to ask you a quick question. Firstly, I think I would rather ask Kiran than chat GPT. <laughs> I think you make much more sense. But uh, you've been a public, you've been uh, an IPS officer, you've been a politician, uh, you've fought an election as well, you've been an individual in public service as well, which has been your finest role in public service, which, in which do you think you've contributed the most? Pondicherry. Okay. And why is that? Because I had the holistic approach. I had total administration, governance, I had the power, the resources, and then the position, and the rules, and the law, and the judgments of the courts. I could do my, the best. I emerged, I could contribute to the maximum. But do you feel that you were let down by the politicians who perhaps didn't support you all the way? Could you have done much more? No, if 
they were letting me down the courts were pulling me up no i mean me by uh, they did, you know they, in the sense that your term was curtailed no my term wasn't curtailed i did almost 4 years yeah. and 10 months i didn't need to do more right will you ever contest an election again never again why is that that's not me okay i'm not transactional by nature right. i'm very very transformational and giving by nature so uh, could we request the prime minister to appoint you in some other role no, and sir. what would it be the prime minister has enough to do don't bother him <laughs> right i'm i'm so sorry we can't take questions for kiran but you know she's so accessible uh, you can ask her any time we've absolutely run out of time for the session thank you so much ms bedi as always for enlightening us and for for showing us both the power and the limits of chat gpt there are certain questions even chat gpt can't answer <laughs> मैंने पूछा वो तो ठीक बोला हाँ बट वो बिजी भी था ना था हाँ? <laughs> कभी कभी बिजी भी था ना टू मेनी क्वेश्चन तो भी एक मिनट में जवाब दिया ओके इट वाज प्रॉम्प्ट इन फैक्ट इट रियली मेजर्ड अप टू अदरवाइज आई वांट टू प्रेजेंट इट टू यू इफ इट वाज नॉट करेक्टली डन बट आई वुड रादर आस्क यू देन आस्क चैट जीपीटी इट्स एग्जैक्टली इट वाज गोइंग बाय माय थिंकिंग ओके इट वाज गोइंग मिस्टर चावला इज टेलिंग मी टू कीप क्वाइट नाउ ओके नो थैंक यू बिलीव मी इफ इट वाज नॉट विद माय थिंकिंग आई वांट टू हैव इंक्लूडेड इट